So Gladopto has been making plug-and-play WLED controllers longer than pretty much any other company out there, and recently they released a couple new options that have great reviews and are perfect for any small to medium-sized project. In today's video, I'll go over the easiest way to get these controllers up and running with my favorite 5, 12, and 24 volt LED strips as well as the WLED settings needed. First, let's take a closer look at the bigger unit. This is running an ESP32, it has a built-in mic, you can use a barrel plug or bare wires for your input, it has two data output channels, 16 and 2, then for each of those outputs you have your voltage, data, and ground connections that are all equipped with a simple lever lock for inserting your wires. They also have an IO33 terminal that can be used to attach any of your buttons, sensors, switches, and more. Now for this first example, to get things powered, you'll more than likely have something that looks like this but some power supplies don't have the plug and instead have the bare red positive wire and bare white negative wire. This controller will take either option. For the barrel plug, just insert it into the opening like I'm doing here. And if you have the bare wires, those can be connected using the levers, red to red and white to black. Push down on the clamps and make sure there's a good connection and you're all set. Now before moving on, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Filmora. So I've been using their video editing software for the past three years after someone recommended it to me. It is one of the least expensive options on the market, and over the years they continue to add new features. One of their many new AI tools gives you the ability to upload a long form video, and Filmora will automatically cut it up into vertical short content, including doing all the speech to text formatting for you. To do this, you can either upload the video file or paste your YouTube link right here. I'll upload a previous video of mine, and then it'll have me select a language, choose the duration of clips I want generated, select a theme, pick a template, and then click generate. Once completed, you'll see a list of vertical clips that they created from your long form content. Find one you like and click edit, and you can see that all the work of cutting up, adding speech to text, and even sound effects has already been done. You can further edit it, or if it looks good, export and upload. So if you're just getting started or an experienced content creator, make sure to download and check out Wondershare's Filmora for your next project. Thank you for the support, and now back to the video. I'm going to remove the wired connection, and for this first example, I'll be using a 5 volt 10 amp power supply that has a barrel plug. I'll start off with my favorite 5 volt strips, which are the SK6812 LEDs. These have a dedicated white LED, as well as all the RGB color options, and are individually addressable, which means every LED on the strip can be a different color and brightness at the same time. So to get this set up, I'll first take the extra JST connector that comes with most LED strips like you're seeing here, or I'll leave a link in the description in case you wanted to buy a bunch of these to have handy. I'll then strip back each wire a little bit more to ensure a solid connection can be made when I attach them to the controller. Once that's done, I'll connect the red wire, which is our voltage, to the red V slot on the controller on the GPIO 16 output. My green data line will go into the D slot, and the white ground will go into the G opening. Next, all you have to do is connect the LED strip to the JST connector, plug your power into the wall, and we can begin to configure WLED. To do this, the easiest way for me has always been to open up the Wi-Fi connection on my phone, and you should see something pop up called WLED-AP. Go ahead and connect to this, and if it asks for a password, type in WLED1234, all lowercase. Now let's say you're somewhere that doesn't have an available Wi-Fi connection point. If you hit to the controls, this will still allow you to control all your lights without the need to connect to a Wi-Fi network. But more than likely, you're going to be at home, so I go the Wi-Fi settings route. Here you can scan for available networks and range, and you can see it found my home Wi-Fi called Jesus Loves You. Put in your password, and then hit save and connect. Go back and reconnect to your home network, and then we can download the WLED app. Open up the app and click the plus icon near the top right and discover lights. It'll scan for all the devices in range and once complete hit the check mark top right. Here it found all the lights I have set up around my TV that I recently did an Ambulight video on that you can check out if interested. But at the bottom is the new WLED controller that we just added. Click on that and go into the main page. Now this is where we have to tell WLED what type of lights we're using and how many we have. Click configure at the top right and then LED preferences. Scroll down and currently the default is set to what you're seeing now. GPIO is already set to 16, but we need to change our lights from WS281X to SK6812 from the drop down. Then since I have a 5 meter roll at 60 LEDs per meter, and these are individually addressable, that means I have a total of 300 LEDs on this strip, so I'll update that in the length field. Below this, it already has our second data output set up for GPIO2, but since we don't have anything connected there, I can hit the minus button to get rid of that for now. If you wanted to set it up later, hit the plus icon and you can enter in the details. Further up, you have the brightness limiter. It defaults to 850 milliamps. However, if you're using a larger power supply like I am, I usually set that to somewhere between 4000 and 5000 milliamps, which equals 4 to 5 amps. Hit save and all your lights should now be on. Next, I'm going to add another 5 meter roll of the SK6812 LEDs to our second output. I'll do the same thing by adding a JST connector like I did on top and then connecting the lights. 
back in LED preferences, go down, and this is where I need to add that second data output back by hitting the plus icon and entering two in the GPIO field. Like before, I need to enter SK6812 as our LEDs and change the length to 300 and color order can stay at GRB. Hit save and all the lights should now be on. Now let's say you wanted to add another roll. I'll connect five additional meters to the end of the LEDs that I just connected. I'll go back into LED preferences and all I need to do for this is update the length field for our GPIO2 output to 600. Hit save and you're good to go. I would connect another five meters to our top roll, but I don't have any more SK6812 LEDs to use, but I think you get the point. And I will mention that you really don't wanna run your LEDs with them rolled up like they are here because the heat doesn't have much room to escape. But for quick testing and short periods of time, you should be okay. Now I did want to quickly mention that I just started a Patreon account, and I want to thank all my supporters who contribute directly to the channel. Every little bit helps me get closer to my dream of being able to make videos full time, and your support means the world to me. So again, thank you from the bottom of my heart, and I'm truly blown away by your generosity. Moving on, I'll transition to my favorite 24 volt LED lights. For this, I can use the same JST connectors that I did for the SK6812s, but I do need to swap out my power supply, and I have a 24 volt 5 amp unit laying around that'll connect the bare wires to the Gladopto terminals. So my absolute favorite 24 volt LEDs are these WS2814 cob lights that have a dedicated white LED. These are perfect for any project where you don't need the smooth animations of individually addressable LEDs because these are going to be controlled in groups, 70 groups to be exact over the 5 meter long strip. Now for whatever reason, these are wrapped the opposite way as the SK6812 LEDs and you can tell by the way the arrows point that this is the end and the beginning is at the very center of the spool. Luckily the beginning JST connector is still accessible so I'll be able to connect that to the controller. To get these configured correctly, go into LED Preferences, and I can remove the GPIO2 Data Output section since we don't have anything connected. Then for our LEDs, we can keep it at the SK6812 slash WS2814 dropdown, but for color order, you need to select BRG and then swap W and G. Set the length to 70, which is the number of controllable groups, hit save, and all the colors should now be correct. Next, I'll add another 5 meter roll of these WS2814 Cobb LEDs to the bottom data output. Go into LED Preferences, and with my brightness limiter still set to 4000 milliamps, we'll add back our GPIO2 data output, choose the SK6812 WS2814 LEDs from the dropdown, set color order to BRG, swap W and G, and set the length to 70 and hit save. From here, I'm going to add another 5 meter roll to the bottom and top. So all in all, we'll have a total of 20 meters of the WS2814 Cobb LEDs being controlled. I'll go into LED Preferences, and the only thing you'll need to change is the length from 70 to 140 on both data outputs. Let's now move on to our 12 volt LEDs, and of course I need to first swap out our 24 volt power supply for a 12 volt one. I'll be using a 12 volt 6 amp unit for this example. I'll also have to remove these JST connectors since they're not quite compatible with my favorite 12 volt LED strips, the famous WS2815 LEDs. These are one of the few 12 volt options that are still individually addressable, whereas most other 12 volt lights are controlled in groups of three. Now these have a data and backup data line, which means they have a four pin JST connector, while the previous two examples only had three pins. I'll take the included extra connector piece like you're seeing here and strip back the wires, but for our two data lines, the blue and green wires, I'll strip them back a little bit more than the other ones. And I'm doing this because I'll be twisting those two together. Then it's the same as before. Red voltage goes into the V slot, our twisted blue and green data wires will go together into the D opening, and the white ground line will go into the G slot. Then I'll do the same thing for our GPIO2 data output on the bottom. From here I'll connect one 5 meter roll of LEDs to the top output, and under LED preferences, I have to change the LEDs from the drop down to WS281X, color order back to GRB, and since this is a 5 meter roll that has 60 LEDs per meter of individually addressable lights, I can put 300 in the length section. You can go ahead and delete the GPIO2 data output if you want, and then hit save and you're all set. Next, I'll connect another 5 meter roll to the bottom, add back the GPIO2 data output, and put in the same information as above. And finally, I'll add another 5 meter roll to the top and bottom, so again, we'll be controlling 20 meters of these 12 volt WS2815 LEDs with a Gladopto unit. And for this setup, all we have to do is change the length for each output from 300 to 600, and you're ready to go. 
I'm going to quickly switch back to the 5 volt power supply and our 5 volt SK6812 LEDs and go over a couple connector pieces that you can easily incorporate into the setup that might come in handy for future projects. The first is this extension JST connector. This comes in different lengths, but if it ever doesn't make sense for you to have the LED so close to your controller and you need some distance, these work perfect for adding that space. Another one is the splitter. It takes the data, power, and ground and splits it into two, so anything you connect to this will do the exact same thing at the exact same time. So if you ever want two sections of lights to be perfectly in sync, this is the best way of doing that. Let's now turn our attention to this awesome mini WLED controller that still supports 5 through 24 volt LED strips and again includes a built-in mic for sound react functionality. This will be a much quicker overview since the connection process is mostly identical to Big Brother. You have the two data outputs that are using the same GPIO 16 and 2 as before and then you have your voltage and ground next to them. The biggest difference however is that this doesn't have a barrel plug spot so your main power lines will go into the V plus and the V minus terminals. Now as far as getting your JST connectors attached is pretty much the same as before. Red voltage line goes into the V slot, our green data into the IO16 opening, and then the white ground into the black GND slot. And then you can do the exact same thing for the IO2 data output directly above. So for this I have my 5 volt 10 amp power supply connected to go along with my 5 volt SK6812 strips. I'll go straight to getting my 15 total meters connected and everything works flawlessly. I'll spare you the boring details of going through the WLED settings again because they're the exact same as what we just went over for the other controller. Next I'll swap out my power for a 24 volt 5 amp unit and then connect all my WS2814 Cobb LEDs and again this little controller is able to handle this with no issues. And finally I'll get my 12 volt 6 amp power supply set up and connect my 12 volt WS2815 LEDs and it's able to handle 20 meters of these individually addressable LEDs again with no problems. Now let's say you're trying to reuse a leftover LED strip or you don't want to use a JST connector. I've made a couple tutorial videos that I'll link in the description that go over the easy steps of soldering your own wires directly to a strip like I'm doing here. And once you have that done, the connection process is the exact same. I'm able to insert my 18 gauge silicone wires directly into the voltage, data, and ground openings for a perfect fit. This also works the exact same way for their mini WLED controller. And if you ever wanted to give soldering a try, I'll leave a link to this all-in-one compact soldering kit in the description. This is something that would have made my life so much easier when I first started, because hauling out all the bulky equipment that I bought ended up being the most time-consuming and annoying part of the entire process. Now I also wanted to test out the sound react functionality in a more dynamic setting. So for this demo, I'm going to go back to the first controller with a 24 volt 5 amp power supply connected. I'll first get my JST connectors attached to both data outputs, then I'll be splitting each of these outputs using the splitter JST attachment that I used earlier in the video. Then I'll be connecting all four of the 5 meter WS2814 Cobb LEDs to those. Next I'll get all the lights rolled out and set up on my floor and then try to get them as evenly spaced out as possible. Now I'll pause it here so you can see the WLED settings in case you want to try doing the same thing at home. And since I'm splitting the data, you're only going to be putting 70 in the length section for each GPIO versus putting 140, which is what you would do if you connected the lights together one after the other. Then I'm also going to check the box, make a segment for each output. This will give me the ability to treat each output as its own separate strip versus treating the lights as one long run. Hit save and you're ready to go. So when you're in the effects tab, any animation that has a music note next to it indicates that it'll react to sound. I think check, my favorite check. one ended up being Pixel Wave, Hello. but make sure to check out all the other options. Test, test, test. Check, check, check. One, two, three. Well, check, that about check. does it for this one. I'll leave you one, with some of my favorite examples two, of this in action, three. and I'll leave up the WLED check, screen check. so you can see what animations are doing what in case you see test. any that you really like. Links for everything, as always, will be in the description. Thank you all check, for watching, check. and I hope you have a blessed day. Lavender in the glove box Lasted longer than we thought Turned out to be a long shot Time's running out, tick-tock It's a shocker on the stock chart Rolling dusty like a quick start I know you were the best part Play the spade but have a black heart
Turning 90 on the freeway, you captivate me. Ocean breeze, can we? 